directly affected by this ordinance is 1982, who allows all ages inside. They feature live music and video games, which attracts individuals under the age of 18. When and if this ordinance takes effect, those under the age of 18 will have to find a different hangout spot. On day six, the Gainesville Police Department takes the citizens to a firearm range, where they learn handling skills, safety, and drills. Third on the county's list of priority is Meadowbrook Golf Course along with the hills of Santa Fe, which was severely flooded 10 years ago, along with many other homes in the area. Just this month, Meadowbrook Golf Course shut down due to declining course conditions that led to declining business. The Florida Gators fell to the Vanderbilt Commodores 34-17 for the first loss in Gainesville to the Commodores since 1945. Maggie here was actually adopted by one of the officers who surprised his family with her at graduation. Without Gordon here in McKeithen Stadium to get the fans fired up before each game, the ballpark just doesn't seem the same. So when Gordon wasn't able to make it to the first series opener, someone stepped up to keep the tradition alive. Not only will Florida's seafood markets benefit from this disaster assistance, but local restaurants who feature their oysters on the half shell, such as Shuck, will feel some relief as well. Since becoming a Tree City USA 30 years ago, the city of Gainesville has planted nearly a thousand trees, several of them being the state's tree, the same Palmetto. Bradford County has lots of strawberry produce stands, but the berries aren't expected to reach their fullest potential until April. It was last summer on this field that Florida lost defensive lineman Dominic Easley to a season-ending ACL tear that prompted one of the worst seasons in Florida football history. Around two decades ago, an 83-year-old woman was crossing this street to get to the Waldo Flea Market when she was struck and killed by a speeding car. That was when the real speeding problem was discovered in Waldo and this traffic light was put in place to slow the motorist down. One witness told police that a man matching the same description asked for a ride to this Best Value Inn on Southwest 13th Street. Police knocked on doors with canine units but did not find the suspect. Thanksgiving is the leading day of the year for house fires involving cooking equipment. Amanda Wood joins us now live from our newsroom with more. Amanda, why do so many house fires occur on the coming holiday? Well, it's mainly because of a lack of awareness of important safety measures. The leading cause of those fires is unattended cooking. The fall season is here and families are preparing this week for home cooking on Thanksgiving. Gainesville Fire Rescue is also preparing for home cooking because you are three times more likely to have a cooking fire on Thanksgiving than any other day of the year. You want to make sure that you have a three foot safety zone around your stove so you kind of want to make sure stuff like your paper towels or any other objects, plastic items that at least they're three foot away. But you also want to make sure that your children stay out of that three foot because it's, it's Thanksgiving. Everybody wants to get involved, your pets, your kids, you've got family there, and you want to make sure that you got a safe zone around your stovetop. But that's not enough if you get distracted. And people forget. You know, so they might go step outside to smoke a cigarette, say, and then they get talking with a neighbor or get talking with somebody, and the next thing you know, they've got that, something on the stove that's caught on fire. The pan dried out, and it caught something that was close by, like paper towels. A popular way to cook turkey is in a deep fryer, which poses several risks. If you decide to deep fry your turkey, you should consider using an outdoor turkey cooking appliance, and be sure to place it on a flat surface of grass or cement. Fire officials say the best outdoor turkey fire is one that does not use oil. Amanda Wood, WUFT News. There were about 1,400 kitchen fires on Thanksgiving across the nation in 2010, so cooking safety is very important on this holiday. Reporting from the newsroom, I'm Amanda Wood, WUFT News. All right, thank you, Amanda. The dogs graduated the Paws and Parole program today. WFT's Amanda Wood has more. The Pauls have been unleashed today as pups Maggie and Cedric graduated from the prison-based dog training program. These adoptable dogs live and train with inmates for eight weeks to learn basic training skills. The women inmates out here are doing fantastic work for every eight weeks. They get to take the shelter dogs that were typically discarded and they get to shape and mold them and to make them good citizens. Cedric and Maggie's adopted parents attended graduation today and were able to bring them home following the celebration. For the inmates, growing close to their pups can make it tough to let go. I mean, every day is great with Maggie. Um, just watching her run and play, she darts around the yard, she runs to the tunnel and jumps over it and just does everything that 
All the obstacle course she'll do by herself sometimes, <laughs> just bits and pieces. She just enjoys playing and doing everything we've taught her. Maggie here was actually adopted by one of the officers who surprised his family with her at graduation. Maggie's new family is happy to get a sweet surprise. Because my daddy's not that big fan of dogs, and we were just lucky this time that he let us get one. For the Mansfield family, they will get to take Maggie home. But for Charlene, she sends off her pride in Maggie and awaits the next Academy of Paul's on parole. <laughs> Amanda Wood, WUFT News. WUFT's Amanda Wood, who spoke with officials from the airport and airline today, joins us from our newsroom. Amanda, what did you find out about this diversion? Well, Leanna, the airline and the airport are still not sure exactly why this happened, but passengers of the flight are demanding an explanation. Gainesville Regional Airport, along with American Airlines officials, are investigating a plane diversion that occurred last night just before 11 p.m. The jet was scheduled to arrive at Gainesville Regional Airport at 10.44 p.m., but could not get in contact with Gainesville's tower for permission to land. After circling Gainesville looking for a response from the Gainesville Tower, the pilot contacted the Jacksonville International Airport and decided to land in Jacksonville shortly after. But officials say the pilot should have known that Gainesville's tower communications get turned over to Jacksonville after Gainesville closes at 10.30. And Jacksonville Tower operators should have given the pilot the okay to land in Gainesville. The regularly scheduled flight was coming in as it normally does and operations were proceeding as normal and the pilots made the decision to divert. But you know they had access to all the information and equipment that they normally would. According to Gainesville Regional, the Jacksonville Tower takes control of Gainesville at 1030 and no one knows yet why the pilot was not aware of that. We have gotten a lot of comments via email and a couple of phone calls and that's how we heard about it this morning and there was you know some social media. Um, conversations about it and some of it was miscommunications you know we were um, kind of upset to learn that crews were not forthcoming with information about why they were diverted to Jacksonville and so we've been trying to figure out what exactly happened ourselves. The worried passengers of the diverted flight were given hotel vouchers in Jacksonville and a flight back to Gainesville this morning. The people on the plane were worried about what happened like did someone have a heart attack or was there something going on in Gainesville? So that was a worrisome message to hear from the pilot. That flight was supposed to land in Gainesville at 1045 last night. Those rerouted passengers finally landed here at 1045 this morning. Gainesville Regional says this has never happened before and they are doing what they can to make sure this does not happen again. Reporting from the newsroom, I'm Amanda Wood, WUFT News. All right, Amanda, thank you so the much. The city of Waldo is dealing with the loss of the Waldo Police Department after a series of scandals involving ticket quotas. The speeding problem in Waldo could soon become a major problem following the dissolution of Waldo's police department. WUFT's Amanda Wood shows us how the Alachua County Sheriff's Office is handling the situation. The city of Waldo's legendary speed trap may soon be coming to an end. The disbandment of Waldo's police department forced the Alachua County Sheriff's Office to assign a deputy to the whole town, not just the main road through town. ASO now has control over the problem area, but will take a less strict approach. Um, but I do believe there is a speeding issue. It's just not going to have the stigma of having them out there 24-7 doing nothing but writing citations. Around two decades ago, an 83-year-old woman was crossing this street to get to the Waldo flea market when she was struck and killed by a speeding car. That was when the real speeding problem was discovered in Waldo and this traffic light was put in place to slow the motorists down. Residents and shop owners in the area are disturbed at the huge jump in the number of people speeding through their town. It's not if, it's when somebody gets killed out here at this intersection because people blow that light all the time and now that it's been announced all over the state that we no longer have a police department, people have been flying through here regular. With limited patrol resources, the sheriff's office arranged for a second deputy to patrol the city of Waldo, but only when there are no other calls that require service. And it's going to take them 45 minutes or a lot more to get out here if something happens, where before, bam, they were here. The Alachua County Sheriff's Office says with change comes uncertainty. 
The sheriff's office hopes the city of Waldo will get used to them being there and yeah. the uncertainty will go away. Amanda Wood, WUFT News.